Awesome. All right. Hello, Besides Zerds. Uh, this is the Slings and Arrows of Open Source Security. Um, I'm Todd, and that's Thomas. Thomas. Uh, I work on I work on Netsplit. You may have heard of it. You work on Aircraft TV. Open with two. So yeah, uh, that's us. Yeah. More than that. <laughs> so yeah, I don't have a funny name on the internet uh, anymore. Uh, I also, I've been recently promoted uh, to vulnerability manager for Rapid7 as well. So if you have bugs in Metasploit or Nexus, uh, please call me or write to security at rapid7.com and you will probably talk to me. Uh, so we do both inbound and outbound uh, vulnerabilities. Um, I'm also a network dork, and I love open source security, and that's what we're going to talk about today. <coughs> so why open source? Um, yeah. For for me, I want to share the stuff that I was making. I want to share the knowledge uh, so that people can know how, how stuff is done. And uh, I also wanted to share the code so everybody can see the code, improve it, help us improve, uh, and that kind of stuff. So. And I love open source security because I want to spill all the beans. Um, security, like as an industry, I don't know if you noticed, uh, is somewhat obsessed with secrets. Um, we still have to deal with secrets in open source security as well, but usually on a very shortened timeline. Um, and, and, not, and I'm not just talking about like vulnerabilities and exploits and today and all that stuff, but even stuff like the stuff that Thomas does was at one point considered somewhat secret. It's a little bit of a black art. When you're doing things like IDS or forensics or really anything involving security, there's this like component of, of uh, mysticism involved, uh, at least from the perspective of non-security people. And so I think open source is, is really powerful it's a powerful way to uh, bring that out kind of into the open. You can attract, you know, maybe perhaps not full-time security people to like look at your stuff. And uh, in in Metasploit in particular, because we deal with vulnerabilities all the time, we also in open source um, we can have we can devote the whole next hour talking about disclosure if you want, because that's such an exciting conversation. Uh, no, <laughs> um, basically. Uh, we practice all of this. Uh, I kind of lean, if I have the choice, I will lean towards the last, which is reasonable disclosure, uh, which is basically responsible disclosure, but I say what the timeline is. Um, and the timeline is not measured in hours. Uh, we tend to do, I, I like 60 days. I think anybody can do anything in 60 days, like a kitchen patch out, tell your customers, whatever. Um, yeah, we can talk more about that if you want, but probably not. Um, the, main problem I see uh, with open source security today, at least in terms of like vulnerabilities, is what's not happening anymore? Awesome. <laughs> did, you, did you break it? I, I totally broke it, dude. Wow. That's why you always break it. Yeah, Marks are supposed to be reliable. is the corrupting influence of money uh, on vulnerabilities. Um, if you just Google for something like BFF zero day economics, uh, you'll find pretty much the position paper on, on uh, paying, paying for O-Day. Uh, personally, I'm not gonna you know, dictate. We can also have that boring conversation if you want. Um, but I'm not gonna you know, stand here and tell you like you should never Sell your hoodie. Uh, go ahead, sell, sell it all you want. Um, I am generally, I don't have a problem with like Microsoft's bounty programs, Google's bounty programs, Facebook's bounty programs, because generally these guys are buying bulbs to fix them, right? Um, it, it, if you have information to the contrary on these, then please by all means speak up because it's an open source. Um, but these guys at least advertise that they're buying these bugs in order to make the world a better place. Um, there are people who are not buying these bugs to make the world a better place. They're using them for uh, for SIGINT, as has been revealed many, many, many times. Uh, I don't think it's a huge surprise to anybody that there are organizations. 
organizations that buy bugs to exploit them and kind of more cowardly organizations that buy bugs to you know kind of squash them so they never have to deal with them. Um, you can you can kind of consider like litigation as a form of buying bugs too because they're just paying lawyers instead of you, which definitely sucks. Um, so I think disclosure is really important um, just because when there are unpatched bugs out in the world, uh, it's it makes the internet less useful. And I like the internet, it's my people. Yeah. Uh, sure. Um, when you're working in open source security, uh, I think you have more, uh, you're, you're more likely to run into trouble um, than in say like working on just some regular open, non-security open source software, like some you know, JavaScript framework because we need more of those. Um, you can never run into trouble in that. <laughs> You'll never get into trouble in that. Everybody will love the server. Um, it's super easy to get yourself in trouble with the press. When you are talking to press and you say words like, yeah, I, um, you know, I can find, I found this vulnerability out on the internet on 30,000 machines. Like the follow-up question is, how did you find that out? And then you get into this whole like court scanning is not a crime conversation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and hey, it turns out sometimes it is. It doesn't matter. Hey, the ACFA, it's the FAA. Um, yeah, some for some people, court scanning is a crime. Um, it can be a crime, uh, and so that's your first mistake is that you just admitted to crime in the press uh, using your, because like I said, I have no funny name. Uh, have a funny name, <laughs> that helps. Um, you can run into the trouble with the law um, in the US and outside the US. Like we, InfoSec security, or InfoSec is somewhat concentrated, you know, in Europe, US, Western Europe, stuff like that. Um, there are big swaths of the world where like what, uh, what we do here is illegal, period. Um, there are big chunks of Africa where this is super not cool. Like if you were writing, say, like a reasonable secure proxy software, say, as an open source security project, uh, don't deploy this in Ethiopia because the Ethiopian government will mess you up. Uh, they have a, uh, a monopoly uh, ISP uh, model. Uh, they're very interested in what all the traffic is coming in and out, and when you try to evade that, uh, you get knocks on your door pretty quick. So should be aware, like generally, of your legal framework that you're operating in, um, and you should be aware that I'm not a lawyer and none of this constitutes uh, legal advice. Please don't sue me for malpractice. And uh, that's it. So, um, and, and I don't know. Like, there there are a lot of ambiguities. There are some state statutes in the U.S. that can describe things like teaching criminal behavior is a crime, and that's and the language is so vague. <coughs> Um, you know, there's, there was something recently passed, I think it was passed in Texas, uh, where I'm at, um, where, <laughs> yeah, uh, something about like hacking for any benefit, and ben benefit could be defined as like lulls, uh, <laughs> you know, um, which is now like more criminal. Um, you know, accessing, accessing computers that you don't have a, a authorization to access, but yet you can never find out what that authorization is. You know, it's, it's, there's a whole pile of stuff to get in trouble with, uh, with this. So just, you know, kind of go into whatever your open source security project is with your eyes open. That's all. All right, just don't like the computer you don't, you're not allowed to. <laughs> and good luck finding out what you're allowed to access. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not allowed. You're not allowed to access this website. I had some data you know, a, few, a few years ago when I was giving a training and we were talking about uh, Wi-Fi cracking. I was told that, um, the computer crime unit uh, in Belgium was there was a training, so they asked me to then not to hack the other access point. I guess they wanted to make sure that we're not going to access the other access points. Uh, yeah. uh, so I'm going to talk about a little bit how to create a success project and different steps involved in that and uh, different things that's going to ha that can happen to you. Uh, you have to pick a project. You can go to a hyperspace to see what's going on. You can go to conventions. Uh, make sure that's something doable. Uh, like, not I'm gonna crack that whole big thing that takes ages. So, I'm gonna tackle AES. Yep. <laughs> yeah, uh, what a fun vulnerability in uh, AES as well. Yeah. Uh, 
make sure it's not illegal. I've seen uh, a couple of months ago, a guy had a project of scanning the whole internet or something. Unfortunately, um, he got in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Don't access computers that you're not allowed to. <laughs> yeah. How are you? Yeah. I should do a pen test, and yet you have authorization to, to do stuff. Uh, you can contribute to some projects that you find online on GitHub and stuff. Uh, make sure that you're interested. So if you're not interested and you want to create your own project, that's not going to last very long. And you have to be very passionate about what, what you do. If you're not, uh, in a few, few months later, you're going to drop the project you want to sign because it's kind of a, it takes a long time, a lot of time to work on that. So to run the project here, we have a few different things that you need. Uh, you need a hosting. Uh, there are some free stuff like GitHub, uh, Jira, repository, Assembler if you you want to use track and stuff. SourceForge is still pretty good. Uh, Cosplay from Microsoft. And I've heard a couple more. So there's a lot of different stuff. I think it's a Bitbucket. Yeah, Bitbucket is a, um, like a GitHub competitor, basically. Gitorious. Source. I'm sorry? Gitorious. Source. Gitorious. Um, okay. I've, I have some stuff on SourceForge um, still. And it's not bad. It's pretty neat. <laughs> uh, there, there's a Git interface now in SourceForge for it. <laughs> If you have an open project, you can request a free license and they have a, a bunch of uh, plugins that you can add have uh, online stuff that's pretty nice. Uh, or you can roll your own stuff, uh, which is based on your needs. So you can install whatever you want. It can be more convenient. Uh, but that means, which is that means how to do maintenance and stuff. And that thing takes a long time. I spend way too much time on managing servers, updating stuff, updating all the so different software I have, the forum, the wiki, track, uh, I still have a bitbot that I have to reinstall and stuff. So, and it can become expensive since you have to sometimes get your own server. Yeah, there's free stuff, it's not just <laughs> Yeah. Uh, not fun stuff. Uh, well, since you're doing security, you are a target. People are going to try to hack you, uh, cyber squatting on domains. So. For that domain is pretty cheap, so make sure to grab a uh, small modification of your name. Uh, for example, if you're correct, there's a dash. I took wit and we have dash dot net com base info etc. Domains are cheap. Yep. Uh, I'm cyber squatting right now on Metasploit. I own the Metasploit.com. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Metasploit.com is the real one. Don't go to Metasploit.com. <laughs> it's just for you. Hey, if you're a professional. It's for it's only for professionals. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna get DOS or DDoS. Uh, I had that a while ago. Uh, basically, the provider there was giving me one, well, giving me I was paying for that, uh, giving me the bandwidth at two terabytes a month, so it should have been more than enough. Unfortunately, uh, the way they count the traffic is that when you request a file, it starts downloading it. It counts the amount, the size of the file as taken. Even though, even if you stop downloading it, so a nice little guy in Spain uh, just made a script or something and took the whole bandwidth uh, to provide me to pay for money to get myself back before the end of the month. That was not fun. <laughs> I'm glad that our community was there to help. So I posted something on my blog, say, "Hey guys, could you help me to to get the website back?" And I was surprised I got a lot of help, and even more to continue have paying for hosting for a few more months. It was very nice. Uh, just on the on the DDoS, we had a we had a pretty nice DDoS attack on us uh, a few years ago. Um, some dude uh, decided that they wanted to just like straight up sim flood us, uh, but they were sim flooding. It, it they were sim flooding and track back like how that was working and they were going by uh, DNSing. So we, we controlled 
cool to be an S. <laughs> so, okay, do you want to send blood metasploit.com? Well, that's great. Metasploit.com is now you. <laughs> uh, and then that went away, because it was, he was DDoSing himself forever. <laughs> um, and so that only took like a day. So metasploit.com was down for like a day. You'll see like in the, uh, in the, in the open network stats, like you'll see a little drop like that for one day. That was that. So, so yeah, I mean, you, if you're in the, but that's the thing, right? Like if you're in the security space, you, sh you should probably know how to deal with this. Um, you're, you're doing open source security anyway. You probably know a couple guys, even if you don't know everything about everything, like which nobody does, you probably know somebody who knows something about what you're doing. So you can get good advice like that. So. Oh yeah, one more thing, do backups. Even if it's backups free, is and even if they say, <laughs> we have backups for a month. Yeah. I've got uh, the forum that was hosted on the cloud system from, from my provider. Fortunately, the, that thing stopped. Well, I couldn't access that thing anymore. And because they were doing maintenance, they were not allowing to reboot anymore. So they stopped it. And the data, the MySQL data, fortunately was on the disk that was uh, not stored. So whenever I turn out the machine, everything disappeared. So make sure you have backups. And now <laughs> they won't let me access that machine anymore. <laughs> they were supposed to give me access uh, last month so that I can retrieve all backups from a year ago. I'm still waiting for that. I'm going to bother them next week. So development. Uh, you're going to have fun with licensing. Um, make sure to deal with that. It, it's a bore, something very boring. <laughs> As a developer, I don't care. I want to make code. I don't care about licensing. I want to get my stuff out. But the thing is, you would need a license. Or uh, if you don't do that, you would end up having, running into trouble. Uh, I've had something, uh, some issues with the Debian licensing, because some of the files didn't uh, have a license. So they asked me. To, to get license, to make sure that all that code was PPL, or at least BSD. Fortunately, uh, there is one guy that, is, uh, that I cannot contact anymore because he, he worked on that like six or somebody pregnant is six or seven years ago. He started way before that, so eight years ago. So I have no idea where that was. The only contact I had was on the next number forum. That was the correct guy, and uh, I never was I was never able to contact him. But I guess we figured out it was a public domain or GPL since he contributed to GPL. Uh, make sure to pick a license. Uh, GPL is good. I like it very much for what I do. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> BSD for life. Yeah. BSD is much more simpler. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm not a lawyer, like I said before, and neither are you. Uh, probably. Uh, no. no. Almost. Cool. Almost. Oh, good. Uh, so what's so what's the best license? <laughs> <laughs> so almost legal advice, but it's no idea. Um, <laughs> you just know you're there. <laughs> uh, but this is a lovely website. It's from uh, the GitHub guys from like two weeks ago. I think it launched. Um, it's a pretty, it's a really good overview, like, uh, it's another one of these, like, overview in human language, you know, not legalese, of the main features of all the licenses, of all, all your more likely licenses. So you'll have GPL for certain things and BSD for other things. I like BSD because I don't want to put any restrictions on you because I'm big all the anarchists and you should be too. Um, a pa the Apache license, uh, everything. So, super great site. So for the code, uh, make sure to use standard tools, use libraries, don't reinvent the wheel. Uh, that takes time. Uh, so, yeah, come into your code. Uh, you're going to regret it if you don't do that. Like six, five or six years later, saying, what the hell did I do here? Why did I do this thing that looks like crap? So make sure to come in if something is unusual. Uh, just give it big steps. So I guess you guys know. Uh, use source control, it's very useful. Use comments when you comment. I remember a company I was at, uh, they use uh, was Microsoft stuff. What was it? Source, 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 source. Yeah. 
Here's your swift thing. <laughs> you can use that. That's, that's, that's open. I hate it. Um, and the guys were using that like uh, hard disk. So it's basically you have to check out all the files when you work on it. So some there's no way two people can work on on the same files. It's kind of hard. And uh, when you were committing, just oh, at the end of the day, commit all my files, no comments. So go figure out what what they do, what they did. So uh, methodologies, uh, depending on how how you work, if you work in a company, uh, methodologies yes, you, you should use them. Uh, if you are on your own, well, that's going to be kind of hard to to follow some. Make sure to keep developing your stuff. So if you don't, people are going to lose interest. They're not going to use your project anymore. Uh, I've heard some program like uh, that we've been using, Quagga. You guys have heard Zebra, uh, or CFD, uh, B2PD. So it does that stuff. So people don't remember projects if they if you haven't worked on it. So it's kind of a, a footnote to that, like. Especially, I, I don't know if this is especially security because I'm mostly a security guy. I'm not really as much of a software engineer by training. Um, but in security, we have this, it, it, we have conference lit, right? Like you develop a thing for a month, right around CFP time, and then you like fix all the bugs like a week to an hour before your talk. Uh, you might get some commits in there afterwards, and then you're done. You're done forever. Uh, this like so, please, please don't do that. <laughs> Um, if you're gonna do that, like that's that's cool and everything. Just make your license like super open so someone else can pick it up if it's at all interesting. Um, but yeah, I mean that's that, that seems to me at least it seems kind of endemic in security. And, uh, so that's my point. Uh, uh, be quality driven. So uh, open source means everybody can see it. Uh, that means uh, potential f future employers. So make sure you do it well because you have a lot of time to do it. Uh, you might not get it, know, know the language at first, so just do it and then you can rewrite the code sometime later. Uh, make versions, and it goes with uh, keep developing, so keep releasing or people are gonna forget. Sometimes people just follow the project for just the version, uh, and not the subversion. I have a lot, lot of commits on the subversion and not many releases. I haven't had a release in like three years and I released like a few few months ago. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Reddit's often. Right. You will always want to perfect it to make sure that everything is, is right. But sometimes you, you have to make a release so that people can uh, try it. There are some people that will use uh, the code in subversion. But most of the bug reports you're going to have is when you do release. People are going to test that. Yeah, and let's, let's talk about um, in, yes, what? Yeah. In, in security software, uh, in general, um, there is a surprising lack of QA. Um, the yeah, QA, the QA, QA software in general. Well, sure. Uh, <laughs> but, I, security. but I think it's more security because, like, the, the cadence, me and my, my counterpart, by the way, from Italy, Pro is right there, Trevor, we talk about this constantly. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, the, the cadence for your typical security project is, okay, I have my discovery, I need to pocket out super fast so I can hit a conference, um, or exploit the bug because I'm, I'm on site, I'm, I'm a pen tester and I'm you know, banging out my, my code. Works for me, uh, so I'm gonna publish and move on. And that's it, that's the, that's the end of the end. No testing, no QAs, no nothing. Uh, if you do that, you will, you will regret something <laughs> uh, later. Notice it at first, uh, but you'll notice it later, especially like three months from you, you when you try to do the same thing. Like what? what you um, so staying testable is probably like we uh, talked about before. Uh, commenting, um, continuous integration is totally a thing, um, and we use continuous integration on Metasploit. We use Travis CI. It's open source. It's great. It's like every Git commit, it runs through the standard set of tests. Now, if you haven't written any tests, you're gonna pass. One test to say like did it crash like you'll probably hopefully pass but hey if that one doesn't pass then hey it's better than nothing right <laughs> hey, it's pretty easy to write you just have to add the tra the Travis dot file yep. in your in your project root 
and register to Travis and make it to your project. And that's very, very easy. Uh, for me, I've got that fine metal sports. I have one in for our cargo sheet too. We, we sync all our IVN to, to Git and we use Travis to, to do stuff. Yeah. So it's travis-ci.org. It's free. Uh, Did you yeah. see any declining contributions when you started imposing these sorts of uh, software engineering structures on your So that was, project? you know, that's, that's a, it's a fear that you're going to chase away everybody. Um, not really. Like, now, partly, you know, we're kind of popular in this light. I mean, people have heard of it. Um, yeah. But, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it gets some use. <laughs> a little. Uh, on, but on the other end, um, yeah, I mean, you're going to get rid of some people. Like, some people are going to say, like, screw this. I, I, I ain't got time for testing. Nobody got time for that. Um, <laughs> But then you're going to attract in, you know, like people who might have more software engineering background. They might not be so much security guys, uh, but that's okay because now you have it's a, it's a teachable moment for them and a teachable moment for you. Like you'll learn some engineering practices. They'll learn like how to not get the shit out. So <laughs> and if you don't like Travis, you can always have BitBoss. So you install BitBoss Python scripts. I used to have that. It's very nice. You install that on a few different machines. You can see a uh, waterfall with all the compiling stuff. You can even do testing with it. Uh, on some machines, you're sometimes going to see stuff that fail. I was surprised that something that works on, on one machine, on one distribution, doesn't work on the other. Hey. So, yeah. It turns out just different distributions are different. And, yeah. <laughs> and you have Windows, that's another <laughs> fun thing. <laughs> and you have Mac. Oh. <laughs> that's right, yeah. Yeah, so like, just do the job. <laughs> you, you don't have any of these problems. <laughs> yeah, Ruby too. Ruby just becomes over <laughs> So, so yeah. Let me go ahead. Yeah. Two, four. Well, uh, what's obvious for you is not for the others. Uh, e code. Well, that's obvious for you. It works. You know. You know it. But it's not really obvious for, you, for the others. So make sure to command it and explain how how your stuff works. If you don't explain how your stuff works, nobody's going to use it. You're not going to have any community around it. Uh, well, read the code is not acceptable. As I've said, people, not everybody knows how to how to read code. So what if the code's not readable? Yeah, <laughs> that too. <laughs> and uh, <coughs> you have to document, uh, support it. You have IOC, you have Freenode, which is completely free for any open source project. Register your forum, register your name. You can even have a custom cloak so that people don't see your IP address and don't try to hack you. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty nice. So you can give that to uh, uh, contributors and other people who help with the project. Uh, email. Uh, sometimes you might want to support over email. It depends what you want to do. Uh, and okay. yeah, the so and I have a little on your URL of a thing. Um, I take my marching orders for documentation from a book called Producing Open Source Software. It's kind of like an orangey red book. Um, it's by Ken Fogel, I'm going to say, and it's it's mostly like the, the subversion story. It's like how SVN came to be. Um, the the stricture in, or the, uh, the prescription in there is uh, you want to have you want to be fascist about referring to URLs. Like have a fact, obviously, but when people are asking old questions that you might not have had a fact for, but you remember because you know you have this giant brain because you're working on open source security, which is fine. Um, you remember from two months ago there was some email conversation like that. Like refer to that in the URL because you're going to have your email all archived. This gets harder for IRC. IRC is much more ephemeral and it's it's somewhat uh, rude to log IRC. Yeah. <laughs> I have a bot. We, yeah. we have a bot in the channel. Yeah. So for no bot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The common things that people ask, frequently asked questions, uh, drivers and stuff. We have a question mark and most of the people know that thing. So it's very nice. So you don't have to repeat yourself and try to remember, check it, check your log, check your email. Yeah, the bot is the bot is very nice. Yeah. So. Right now our bot is named Peaches. So users aren't devs, but uh, sometimes they're criminals. Um, yeah, when so when you're in I think we touched on this a little bit earlier, not only is, is what you're doing possibly illegal in some jurisdiction somewhere. Um, but someone's end use of your thing may be illegal in some jurisdiction somewhere. And conspiracy charges are a thing. So 
if you have somebody asking you, like, hey, I am having a real hard time, you know, circumventing the firewall on this IP address using your, you know, awesome firewall circumvention tool that you wrote. Go ahead. Testers. Yeah. <laughs> don't say. <laughs> yeah. Don't say. Oh, hey, let me help you with that. And they give you the IP address, and then like, of course, you're gonna rip the message, and it's like some like giant bank in Brazil. <laughs> you may want to like think about how much you want to help the student. Um, <laughs> you know, yes, I'm not standing in Brazil, but do you really want to be enabling criminals? Generally, when these kind of questions come up, like far too often on the Metasploit uh, uh, mailing lists, uh, we politely and sometimes less politely say, listen, dude, this is for penetration testers. Uh, you really shouldn't be publishing your client's IP space here. You know, let them know that you're not going to pass this. Um, in other cases, oh, like... I mean, no, literally. I mean, this happens way more often than you would expect. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, we've had we've had guys come up in the channel in email in Google Plus, like just harassing us and harassing us to like, hey, I'm trying to get some help on writing some malware. Can you help me? And by the way, I'm from this like organization that is unfriendly to the United States. Is that is that cool with you? No. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, yeah, yeah. Don't engage in these guys because hey, you know how the FBI like. People know not to hack other people, other people are access point and stuff. But sometimes we still got people who don't read, don't ah. care. Ah. Ah. I don't need to read the rest. And uh, well, you can copy them. There's pretty good space uh, if you start your project. So do not hack something that's gonna be known to you. So I don't support anybody who ask you to do that, even if he's really friendly. <laughs> yeah, even if he's really friendly and. I'm going to give you money. I mean, you're, you're working in open project. source, right? So, right. Uh, yeah, I'll money. You need money. <laughs> money. I like money, too, you're saying. Um, <laughs> everybody, like, you're working in open source, so you're clearly, like, a helpful person already, right? Um, but you really, like, I mean, it's a serious business, right? Um, you need to uh, just go with your gut. If something feels wrong, it's probably wrong. I mean, this is, like, you know, how the mob stays out of jail and how you'll stay out of jail. <laughs> and now, which is nice, is that users people on the forum on IRC start to know, uh, contributors start to know that and tell others. And I was surprised from time to time I see in the forum people that have never been there that just posted maybe one time, told another guy, hey, what you're doing is not, it's not the actual point, you cannot do that. So, I guess really nice. Um, well, you have to talk about it. So, you can go to a hacker space, it's a very small audience. Uh, sometimes I, I've been to a hackerspace a guy talking about bitcoins. Uh, it was, there was like maybe eight people in the audience. That was pretty nice. And it allows you to gauge the interest. So see how your content go, how, how you talk it, then they go. Uh, and you can get feedback since there are not that many people. And uh, sometimes they need a bio and abstract, but depending, uh, most of the time they won't need that. So you Feel free, you can present at the presentations are more than welcome there. There's a DEF CON hack groups all over the US. There's even some in Europe. Uh, there's one in London and a few other, a few other countries, I think. Yeah, Google your city hackers and you're going to find like three or four organizations. So, some more than just DEF CON groups, uh, the hackerspace, just Google a hackerspace and your city name. You, I'm pretty sure you're going to find one. If not, just Google the next big city. Next city. Uh, you can go to conventions. Uh, like now. Um, so they require a bio and abstract, so that you have to talk a little bit, a per small paragraph about you, and a small paragraph about what you're going to talk about. Uh, you go through a selection, so you might not get selected. Don't be offended. They get a lot of people asking to, to talk. Uh, sometimes they don't have enough slots. Uh, I'm sorry, dude. We can uh, we don't have time to to hire you. But don't feel offended. You can always try other conventions. There are lots of them. Uh, B sides are really nice uh, next to other uh, like big conventions. 
Um, and sometimes you can help with travel and lodging if you really need it. Uh, smaller conventions won't do that. Uh, bigger like restaurants. Yeah. I don't know if this has does it. Uh, Black Cat does it, uh, but I think they require you to talk at least for a full hour to, to get access to a convention. Uh, you have free access to a convention, of course. Um, but UX, that means you speaking, so make sure you do a good presentation. Don't do something that is crap. So if you do something like that, you might not, uh, they might not let you talk anymore. And people at these conventions have connections in other conventions. So make sure to, that you really want to talk and that you don't do a good job with it. Last minute cancellation, uh, they're not happy about that. So try to find some, somebody last minute. Uh, I've seen that happen in, uh, at the convention, and the guy is not really welcome anymore to, to speak there. So, unless you have a good excuse, somebody died in the family or baby on the way. Presentation, well, you have to prepare and practice a lot. Uh, don't be stressed. Uh, a stress presenter means that the audience is going to be stressed. So practice. He, imagine that you're talking to a friend and that you're presenting some stuff to your friend. Sorry, let's get back to my presentation. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> so, and make sure your stuff is ready when presenting. Unfortunately, that Mac is supposed to be reliable. I had everything ready. Uh, and be careful when joking. I remember uh, I was uh, at school. Uh, I was done doing an internship. I had to present uh, what I did during that four, those four months of the internship uh, before I got my degree. And uh, all the people that were um, taking care of the different students that came to the company were there. So there was like 10, uh, 10 different companies. And one guy tried to make a joke when I was presenting. Unfortunately, I didn't get the joke. So it wasn't funny for him at all. So. And if you if you ever want to make a joke during your presentation yourself, make sure that it's easy to understand. It's not a technical <laughs> joke, or nobody's going to get it. The five point point one. Make sure to make to have something small, no, just a few bullet points. Talk around the bullet points. Don't make a huge blog of text and read it. If you if you do that, just write something on the blog. It's not worth it. People are just going to read the presentation and not follow you to follow up to leave or whatever. The other ways, I, as I said, you can use a blog. Which is, a blog is pretty nice to have time to prepare. You can always change it if you see people telling you that there's something wrong there, wrong command line or something like that. Uh, post news on your website. That's very important so that people see that your project is alive and it's not dead. And, uh, you can do YouTube screencasts to present how you stuff work, how to set it up. Uh, that's very nice. Oh, people love it. People love screencasts. Like you do screencasts, you're producing videos, <coughs> you amazing like yeah. Especially if you have like lots of love sessions or something. Like, people dig that. Yeah. <laughs> Explain to them how to install your stuff. That's the mo one of the most important things. Yeah. And how to use it. Yeah. Work. This is a job. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. For me, it's kind of a second full time job. So after work, well. only if you're wildly successful, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, even at the beginning, you have to, especially at the beginning, you have to work a lot more. So you're gonna be exhausted most of the time, long hours, sixteen hour day. So fun. <laughs> well, I love it. Um, you can uh, make a living with it, but it will pretty much take a lot of time. Uh, I don't make a living with it, but I got a job thanks to it. So that's very nice. I got a job that I really love. And check your company policy. It might not allow you to, to create a new project, or the project might belong to a company. So make sure to check In that. In the US, it almost certainly belongs to a company. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, you're going to want to get some kind of sign-off from your manager. Yeah. Just go talk to your manager, CEO, if you know it. Yeah, um, and speaking of talking to management, um, you 
know, if you can like, you can totally sell your open source project to your managers. Then. I mean, it's possible, especially if you are really good at biz speak. Like the, like I mean, you need to achieve strategic synergies with proven client-centric open source methodologies that deliver results and ROI. Like you slip that in, man, it's magical. Mm -hmm. and they're like eyes ah, light up. They're like, oh, you're one of me. You're one of my people. So they want to know that their their money will get value in return. Yeah, yeah, bizarre. they would like. I know, oh, right? Bizarre. I know. <laughs> but that's the thing, right? It's like I'm not a marketing guy. I'm not a sales guy. I'm not. An, I'm not a VC. I don't. You know, and I'm an anarchist. Yeah, yeah. Um, but like, if you say ROI instead of like, yo, dude, you're gonna make money. Like, that will fly a lot better. <laughs> What's up? Before you write a lick of code, go check all the laws because there are a bazillion of them and nobody understands. Right, yeah, we talked about that a little bit earlier in the, at, the, at the top of the presentation. I'm not a lawyer. We have almost a lawyer here that also doesn't know any English. <laughs> 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 about about licensing. Yeah. Almost, almost. Oh, about <laughs> I'm sorry. About See, about don't tell jokes. <laughs> <Yeah. about laughs> <laughs> no, I'm talking about All that time you're anarchist hackers, somebody yeah. has to keep you out of What do you mean? Exactly. Thank you. Thank All Thank you the it. California laws, if you're in California, highly favor right. your employer. So if you write anything, I don't care if it's in your sleep, if no matter where you are, oh, right. you're there is a very good yeah. chance your employer owns that. Yeah, and it. it's in Texas too. And another reason you can wind up in big trouble. And, <laughs> okay. and, and if you're working for the government in any way, you gotta check all of that. You have to check um, yeah, your contracts, the contracting law, check all of that before you start releasing your software. Yeah, if you're not writing classified, and I'm not a lawyer. classified stuff too, uh, ITAR, uh, <laughs> you have to check all of it. Yeah. Don't release them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, luckily, uh, I did, most of the stuff that we're going to be working on is not going to be munitions anymore, right? Like, that's not a, that's not a thing. But yeah, well, if, it's space is, it's still, yeah. if it's space related, it might be. ITAR is not necessarily a thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's technical information. Yeah. Yeah. I don't Yeah, I'm just a Russian too. <laughs> Uh, if it's not in the law and uh, it belongs to your company, <coughs> it's probably going to be on the contract that you sign. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, anyway, a bunch more stuff to make you not want to do anything. It, it's boring <laughs> for, for <laughs> developers, <laughs> but to read it. Yeah. To read it, that's very important. Really, to just go to your employer and tell them that you're making this thing that doesn't provide them with business value, otherwise, you're going to share all sorts of things because it's your stuff. I thought that was a cold button. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's, that's, that's where you don't do any beat talk. <laughs> I think that got switched too, but yeah. 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 Well, I don't know what this is. Yeah. Proof of concept. Uh, I think we gotta, we gotta wrap this up here. Yeah? All right. Yeah, we're like five over. Okay. I think it's like 10 minutes. I think. 10 minutes? Yeah, I think. Oh, no, 6.45? Okay. Yeah, it's 6.48. Oh, perfect. Okay, great. Uh, so once your project gets known, uh, it's uh, basically kind of bad. <coughs> and next, uh, users, make sure you listen to them. Uh, there's the people who use your project and they use your stuff that saying to them, uh, you're there. So you wouldn't be there if they weren't if not using your project. Uh, if you need help, always ask. That's what I did for even when I had the DDoS. I did more money than what I had, so I could use it for hosting a little bit longer. And uh, explain how to contribute. It's very important. People don't always know. Sometimes they have to sign up for a badge, sometimes they don't. There, should, should, should I do that thing before? Should, should I add a comment in on top of the badge? Uh, ex explain all those things. Uh, that's obvious for you, that might not be obvious for everybody else. Uh, the team, uh, you create a project, you're the leader. Don't be a dictator. Uh, you, you see, we still have the, the last word. But listen, uh, listen to your teammates. Yeah, we didn't finish. Yeah. <laughs> be nice to other people. Don't be a jerk. Uh, and uh, be thankful for people that works with you, uh, or work for you, uh, because most of the time, also for them, it's uh, they do they doing it after after the job. So, and um, another thing you might want to consider is that sometimes there are life events that prevent people from contributing to projects. I've had a few few guys contributed quite a bit and somebody couldn't because they had other stuff coming up. And uh, well, don't expect anything. 
because lots of people are saying, hey, I'm going to contribute, I'm going to help you translate, I'm going to help you doing some code. And in the end, you start working and they don't do anything. So, and just be happy when somebody actually does something. If you're, if you're expecting something uh, from people when you give them uh, credentials for contributing, you will be very disappointed. Don't take it personal. Yeah. Uh, as I said, don't become a jerk. And uh, you can become an expert, but you can you will always sometimes be wrong. I'm sometimes wrong. And I prefer, I want somebody to tell me that, hey, that, that thing you say here is wrong. I don't want to, to keep saying that same stuff all over every single time and keep being wrong, looking like an idiot. And uh, you can write books, uh, training modules and stuff. I did uh, a training with uh, offensive security, uh, waifu, if you guys have heard about it. Uh, you can go teach. I'm doing that too, uh, like about two times a year. And you can get a job in your project field. And that's a lot of fun. Since you like projects, that's what you're passionate about, uh, that's probably what you want to get. Uh, yeah, and to kind of go along with like become an expert on your thing, uh, you want to avoid a little, you want to avoid specialization. Um, this this is more in like kind of components of your code. If you have, say, a packet parsing library, and you have like an IPv6 guy, and anything having to do with the IPv6 stuff, you just like kind of kick over to him. I mean, you have a couple problems here. Obviously, you have a single point of failure, uh, the bus factor. But on top of that, like you kind you you kind of start developing these fight codes in your code base, where people will feel either uncomfortable committing to that part of your library because they're not that guy. Um, that guy can start becoming a jerk and uh, you know kind of dissuade people from contributing to my beloved chunk of code that is that is a reflection of me as a human. Um, yeah, so you want to avoid kind of. Because if you find yourself kind of sliding down that road, and I think it happens even in, in like regular software projects all too often, um, you know, kind of call it out and like get taught on like what this guy was thinking and or and how you could you could be you know a backup and like hey I would really like to understand how all your you know IPv6 magic works because that stuff is freaking voodoo, um, you know, because then you can just start teaching each other and now you have you've raised your bus factor. This goes back to testing. It goes back to Accepting you know patches from other people. Okay, success. Uh, everybody has to get his own. You have to get your own definition of success. Uh, it could be getting a job in the project field. It could be <coughs> doing what you like. So y your employer gives you the chance to to do to work on a project for like a few hours a, a month or a few hours a week. Uh, speaking at a convention, uh, you can write books about your Stuff. And there are quite a few books about my life. Yeah, a couple. <laughs> uh, you can even create a business. It's pretty nuts. Um, you can get acquired. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. For some people, it's success. For some people, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> you, you might want to keep, keep your own stuff for you and then not be acquired. Well, that's the thing, right? It's like different. So what's next after that? You have to keep going, keep developing, keep creating, doing version, advertising for it, uh, news and stuff. You can go inspire people and uh, be prepared to change and uh, share your experience with others like we do now. So. You know, uh, you will learn a lot. Uh, I learned a lot myself. When doing the projects, I got lots of surprises. Uh, some were less fun than others. Uh, partnering is the key to success. Uh, you might want sometimes to get the success for yourself, but if you're partnering with people, you're going to get more visibility, and you're going to get both success. And uh, share that with people. That's how you're going to uh, be successful with a new project, even if for a business. Uh, and the words of the management, they're going to be ready for me. Uh, so make sure it's
good code. And, uh, or if it's not good code, start rewriting it, post a new that, hey, I'm rewriting that thing. I, I know that code is a piece of shit there. <laughs> or that like two, two or five years ago when I didn't know how to code. Um, also, never back then, uh, sometimes you're going to get hacked. Uh, again, people that are going to deface your website. Uh, it's going to happen. Uh, you, you have been doing that thing for so long. Just keep doing it. It's not. It's just one small thing. Just don't stop at that. Um, you can watch that video. It was pretty good. It was uh, open embedded. I think. Uh, yeah, it's uh, at, uh, Intel. Like yeah. how how to like market um, open source code, both like externally and internally. Yeah. So it's like kind of good effect. Even if you know mark marketing it, uh, you might want to to look at it. They they have very good points. They are very useful for creating new projects. Yeah, and by the way, you don't have to like start the next the next big thing. You know, you can contribute too. Um, every open source project on earth always wants more contributors. Uh, security's no exception. If you are a user, of, like for me, like as a producer of open source software, like I want like a certain percentage of my users to like graduate into at least bug reporters. And of those guys, I want to graduate them into a hey, contributor. That'd be awesome. Um, so that can be the, the everybody can. Yeah, and contrib contributing is not always about code. Right. You need documentation. Uh, you're going to need people to help during RFC, help others where, when you're not there and stuff. So it's not only about code. There, even I, I need people to to help me with uh, server stuff because that thing takes a lot of time. There are a lot of people that are lo looking to help projects. But m most of the contribution we know is uh, about code. Yep. Um, at, at Metasploit, we have we have about a hundred and uh, about two hundred and ten or so like historical con people who have contributed to code. Um, easily four times that of people who have never committed, uh, but who have absolutely like been a part of Metasploit success. You know, uh, they've been teaching, they've been writing, they've been doing the, the cool stuff that you do. You know, I mean. <laughs> Go to the QA room yeah. at the end of the hall. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. All right. Zero questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll come back after. <laughs>